Hello, everybody. Look what I got here. Well, I bought five more of those cards because these are quite amazing. And uh, these are all, even though it's a different seller, they're all packaged exactly the same. So if you open them up, they are all packaged the same. So I have tested this card here in a workstation, on a server and on a game server. And they all work flawlessly. The thing is, all of those devices have good cooling, so there's good front to back cooling, especially on the server, and those devices are not overheating in this case. But you cannot run these devices without any cooling. So if you, for example, use this card in your regular PC, or even in a thin client, this card will be damaged or even completely die out. So using this card, make sure you have good cooling. Also, if we look at this card here, then you can see it's made from a Chinese manufacturer, Inspur, which is actually a legit hardware manufacturer, and I never seen this one in any Western um, devices. I also made a video about the chips that have been sorted onto this PCB, and we have uh, some um, we have some multiplexers right here. We have a few uh, bug converters. We have a, we have some MOSFETs right there. So there's no ROM chip basically. The, the only chip that could store some data is the main chip in the middle, which is the Intel chip. And I checked the numbers. I checked the dimensions. I checked how it's soldered on to this PCB, and it's it's a legit chip. So there should be nothing that uh, that can host the payload. So. When you plug this card into your workstation or your server, your game server, whatever, there's nothing getting installed. There's no communication going on. You need to install the Intel drivers, the official Intel drivers from their website to make this card actually work, to make this card communicate with your PC. Now, I also checked the packets via Wireshark and people ask me if this card isn't able to like communicate or do some home calling to China even like undetected via Wireshark. But I don't think so because internet doesn't work that way. If you have a switch, that switch expects certain packets to route your packets to other places, to your firewall, for example. So it's not just like there's some kind of sussy voltage going out out of this port and just bypasses your router, just bypasses your firewall and your ISP and the backbone of your country and then goes to China. No, the internet does not work that way. There are certain protocols that the device has to utilize to get around your home network. So it has to use TCP IP, else it will not work. There are some other protocols like ICMP, for example, if you do a ping, you're using ICMP. This can only connect to other things if it's using the corrupt protocols that your firewall understands. It cannot just send some garbage over it and expect that data is getting through it. No, that does not work this way. I'm doing a little test. We're going to install this one in a server and on my workstation. And then, well, we can run some VMs, we can run a game from the storage, and then we can see how it performs. If it performs good, if it's stable enough. Let's see. Okay, so what we have right here is a Dell server. And let me show you how to install network card inside this machine. So we have this little ledge right here. So you just open it like that. And then we have the expansion base right here. So we have one, two, three expansion base. There are PCI riser cards on all the, so the sides. These servers are basically made to be handled without any tools. So you can, for example, open this one and you have access to all the RAM banks. And if a fan does not work anymore, you can just replace it like this. If you want to replace a expansion card, we have to just pull this pin and then you can just take this card off. You see? Now, the thing in the server is that the airflow goes from front to back. So it goes from front to the RAM banks to the expansion slots. So we have this card right here. Just installed it into the riser, riser card right here. Now we can install, for example, this PCI Express expansion card with all those NVMEs. 
just like that. And now we have storage, we have 10 gigabit Ethernet connection, there's a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connection for everything else. All right, now we will connect one cable directly to the workstation you want to transfer data from and to it, and we will use one more cable to connect the server to the internet and to the router so I can connect to it via remote desktop protocol. Alright, so we have the server which is the 10.10.1.10 IP address and we have the server which is the 10.10.1.3. Now Wireshark is currently monitoring the traffic that goes over the 10 gigabit network card and as we can see, we see nothing because there's no traffic going on right now, there's nothing they can talk about. What we see here right now is the small message block protocol, which is this window we have open right here. This is over SMB, small message block. What we see right here is an app request. So the server asks everyone who is connected who has the IP address 10.10.1.10. .10. And my client says, hey, I'm here and I have this MAC address, so you can contact me on this MAC address. Now, this might be interesting. We see a TCP read transmission, which maybe, which could mean there is a packet loss actually, which means something is not really reliable here. Now, let's do a little test. I have this Windows 11 image right here, and we're going to copy it over to the NVMe drive we installed. But as we can see, it's only using ports we know that have to be used. So it's port 445, which is still a small message block. And this is being used to transfer the file. And there's no suspicious port at all being used. There's, there's no like search for a foreign IP address. There's no search for uh, the Chinese server, proxy server, whatever. As we saw, we have good performance on both sides. So this might actually be a good card. Well, this is not a long-term test. So I don't know what happens if we transfer like 10 gigabytes a day. Uh, so I don't know what happens if we transfer like one terabyte a day over those cards and look at the long-term performance, if it degrades or not. But right now, I think it's, it's, it's a pretty good card, actually. I think that sums it up, basically. Thank you for watching, and I hope we'll see you in the next video. I hope you learned something. See you later.